I want to talk about how we can solve problems that involve fractions or proportions. And oftentimes you'll see problems that are, you know, one single fraction is equal to maybe a number. And we talk about the idea of, of cross multiplying or something like that. Um, I wanted to go a little further and talk about, you know, what if we have a fraction equal to another fraction, but we have x's on both sides. But of course the ideas we're going to do would apply to even simpler problems or more complicated problems. Um, the idea of cross multiplying, you'll often see people that talk about, you know, we'll just do this, x times 3, and then do this, 4 times x plus 2, and that, in a sense, is what we're going to do. That's what this is going to look like, but I want to explain real quick why that works. So using the ideas we've already kind of established in algebra, we're saying we have some number divided by 4, and if we want to solve for that number, we, we do the opposite. So instead of dividing by 4, we multiply by 4. Of course, if you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other, like that. 4x divided by 4 is just x. So this other side we now have. Well, then we go to the other side and we say, well, x plus 2 is divided by 3, and I want to solve this. Well, dividing by 3, I have to do the opposite to solve, so we multiply by 3. I'm going to put that right here. But of course, we have to do that to the other side. So we end up with 3 times x is equal to I'm just going to kind of do parentheses because this 4 is going to be applied to both. So 4x plus 4 times 2, like that. And again, what that looks like, and I, um, this is the most common way people talk about is cross-multiplying. The idea that you just did 3 times x, and then you did 4 times x plus 2. But I just wanted to explain this in a way that you know, makes it seem like all the other problems we've done. That's really what we're doing here. So then we'll get the x's together like always. I'm going to get them on the left like I typically do in order to have that be 0. 3x minus 4x is negative 1x equals 8. Divide both sides by negative 1 in order to get x by itself. So x is equal to negative 8. Like that. Let's do another one. All right, I've tried to involve a lot of different things in this problem. and to kind of start thinking about an order here, I, uh, I would start, let me make a little note here, by getting rid of parentheses. That's the first thing I would do. So I'm going to just multiply in. I'll do that in both of these cases. I'm going to kind of make a pass through, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the negative 3 So that's all that happened there. And then I'm going to multiply that 4. That's all that happened there. Now, another thing you, I think, would want to do here is just kind of simplify your sides. So let's just look at the, the numerator. We have a minus 6 and a minus 4, which makes a minus 10. The other side was already simple. Yeah. And now let's, uh, let's think about, you know, the fact that we're dividing by 6, so we're going to multiply both sides by 6. We're dividing by negative 5, so we're going to multiply both sides by negative 5. And I'm going to make the note here, we are essentially just cross-multiplying. That's what it's going to look like. So we're going to multiply. And the trickiest thing with cross-multiplying, or the toughest thing to remember, is remembering that negative 5 here has to get multiplied to both things, and that 6 has to get multiplied to both things. So if I multiply that negative 5 times negative 3, I get positive 15x. Negative 5 times negative 10 is a positive 50. And then I multiply 6 by 4x. And by negative 4, I'm at that. The nice thing about this, this kind of way to do it is all the problems eventually look the same. Now we're down to just moving our x's to one side. Maybe I can even, for the sake of space, do two things here at once. Subtract the 50s over. So I've got negative 9x equals negative 74. 
I divide both sides by negative 9. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit just to get rid of a, a negative divided by a negative is positive. And you could certainly type that into your calculator if that's what your teacher says. But I'm just going to stop right there. So I would get rid of any parentheses before you deal with the fractions. That would be my next thing. Okay. But once you have dealt with the fractions and then essentially cross multiplied, uh, then you can just proceed and simple and and work through the problem as you have before. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel push out more videos for more people. I have playlists on geometry, algebra. Uh, calculus and Statistics.